If you haven't made a folder for your assets you're using, I highly recommend doing so. I have my own folder for my assets and a folder inside just for weapon mods. Click and drag your weapon's game object into the file browser. Doing this will turn the object into a prefab, which you need in order to export your mod. Next, right click the hierarchy and create a new empty game object. Whatever name this game object has will also be the mod's file name. Add a weapon content mod component. Click and drag your new game object into the file browser to turn it into a prefab. The second prefab is what you'll export to turn your weapon into a playable mod. From this point on, I'll refer to the second prefab as your weapon content mod. Select your weapon content mod in the file browser. Increase the weapon entry amount to how many weapons you want to include in your exported mod. While your weapon content mod is still selected, drag and assign your weapon prefab into the prefab slot. Now I'll go over what each parameter in the weapon content mod does. Name is the display name your weapon will have in-game. Slot refers to what category the weapon will be equipped in. Usable by AI is to make it compatible with bots. Allow override is supposed to make the weapon not enabled for bots by default, but for my testing, this checkbox doesn't have an effect on the weapon switch menu. If you don't want bots to use your weapon, disable both options. Type makes the bots recognize what scenario they should equip and use the weapon in. Make sure to set stealth weapons to stealth, so squad mates in the spec ops game mode recognize your weapon as a proper stealth weapon. Sword priority is to help organize your weapon's placement if you include multiple weapon entries in one content mod. Tags are the categories players can find your weapon in the loadout menu. I recommend including at least one vanilla category in your tags, it's so class system mutators can recognize and use your weapon mod. If you plan on making multiple weapons, it'd be good to make a category named after yourself, so players can find your weapons easily. Once you've set everything up how you want, make sure to select the weapon content mod in the file browser. Press Ctrl E to export, or go to Rainfield Tools, Export Content Mod. Exporting may take some time depending on your PC specs. Once it's finished exporting, you can test the mod straight from Unity. Select your weapon content mod and press Ctrl T. Greenfield will instantly launch the vehicle testing map. Select your weapon and spawn in the point. Try using your weapon like you would normally in the match. Shoot, aim, sprint, reload, etc. You probably noticed that some looks dislocated here. I had to increase my graphic settings here to make the idle pose look as it should. I recommend selecting rafts and changing the weapon switch to only your weapon. Launch with those settings and check if the AI is using your weapon as you intended. When you finish playtesting and want to make some adjustments to your weapon, you must open the prefab to make your changes. In my weapon mod, I've noticed the casing particles eject backwards. I select a prefab in the hierarchy, then click open to edit the prefab. I change rotation value in the casing particle system, then click the arrow to exit the prefab. Re-export the weapon content mod to update the mod. If you made changes to the weapon prefab without opening prefab first, the changes won't be carried over but you can easily resolve that by clicking Overrides, Apply All. If you notice your AI holding the weapon incorrectly, but the third person transform is configured properly, the issue was caused by exporting your content mod while the weapon prefab was disabled. Next to your prefab's name, make sure your checkbox is enabled, then re-export. If you want to organize your weapon's lab hierarchy, right-click the hierarchy to create a new empty game object. Name it something to group your weapons together. Then place your weapon prefabs inside that empty game object. Keep the weapon prefabs enabled, and enable or disable the parent game object when you need to hide it. Before you post your mod to the Steam Workshop, you need to make a thumbnail. Most players will judge your mod based on your thumbnail, then on the contents of the mod second. You can totally take my word for that. The thumbnail should be a square PNG image. 
If your image isn't square, Steam will fill in the gaps with black borders. When it comes to the actual design of your thumbnail, there's many different styles of thumbnails you can make. You can include a soldier model posing with a weapon, show off the weapon with a spotlight, or just use the UI render image. While you can make a high quality render of your model, Steam has a 1 megabyte file size limit for the thumbnail. Most modders I've talked to, and I myself, use Paint.net for their image editor of choice for thumbnails. Paint.net is a free image editing program and is easy to run on any computer. Another benefit of Paint.net is when you save your image, the final preview will show what the file size will be. Go back to Unity to start the uploading process. Click on Rainfield Tools, Publish to Steam Workshop. You'll need to connect to Steam, then create a new workshop item. Click Change Image to assign your thumbnail. Title will be the mod's name on the workshop. Description is a chunk of text players will skip. I recommend typing your description in Steam rather than in Unity. Unity only displays one line, so it's difficult to determine if your formatting is correct. In the left side window, click on the mod you want to upload to the workshop. The RFC file, your export mod's file format, will show on the right side window. You might have to read Steam's workshop policies if it's your first time uploading to the workshop, but since I've uploaded mods before, I didn't get a notice saying I need to read and agree to it. Click Publish to Workshop to upload. Steam should open on its own to your workshop entry. Here, you can edit the description, add more images to the gallery, and add any friends on Steam as contributors if you had help making your mod. For your description, you can use Steam's text formatting to add any special effects to your text. Here, I'm using the heading style text to grab the viewer's attention. Make sure to credit any asset authors for their works that you use. It's also a good idea to include what categories your weapon is listed under, so players can easily find your mod. By default, your workshop entry will be marked as private, so the average player won't be able to find it. To change that, switch visibility to public. If you update your weapon mod and want to update the workshop version, it's a similar process for uploading to the workshop. Click on Rainfield Tools, Publish to Workshop. Connect to Steam and use the drop-down to select the mod you want to post the update to. Click Refresh and Update to have your upload folder update with the appropriate RFC files. Write the changes in the change log and enable the Make Public checkbox if your mod is already public. Then click Publish. If you've been following along with this tutorial since the beginning, you should now be able to make your own weapon mod. Good job making it to the end! If you have further questions about weapon modding or need help troubleshooting your mod, I highly recommend asking for help in the Rainfield Discord server's modding channel. The chatting and file sharing make the server the most ideal way to help solve any issues you might have. Thanks for watching until the end.